What is up? This is your LA in a Minute, and I'm here in front of 8763 Wonderland Avenue, where in 1981, one of the most notorious murder cases in LA history took place. It technically remains unsolved to this day, but the notoriety and history are such that people keep talking about it 41 years later. Let's get into the history. So the house on Wonderland Avenue was home to the members of the Wonderland Gang, the most successful distributor of cocaine in Los Angeles in the 1970s. Their growing operation had virtually cornered the market. The property was officially leased to Joy Miller, who was a longtime heroin user who had fallen in with the gang after separating from her wealthy husband in Beverly Hills. Ron Launius was the leader of the gang. He'd already spent time in jail for drug smuggling and narrowly escaped life in prison for murder when the prosecution's star witness was killed in an accident. He was also a person of interest in as many as 30 other homicides. Ron's wife Susan also lived there, but she was not a gang member. She was just a user. Ron's second-in-command was Billy Deverell, who had made a name for himself during the Vietnam War when he was dishonorably discharged for smuggling drugs back to the U.S. in the bodies of dead U.S. servicemen. The most unusual member of the Wonderland household was John Holmes, porn star, who often came over to use cocaine. Stealing from their rivals was a secondary source of income and an effective way to keep control of their drug game until it backfired one terrible night. On June 29th, 1981, several days before the Wonderland murders, four members of the Wonderland gang robbed the home of notorious club owner and gang leader Eddie Nash. Launius and Deverell disguised themselves as police officers, went into Nash's home, and handcuffed him to his bodyguard, Gregory Diles. During the robbery, as Nash was being made to open the safe, they accidentally shot and wounded Diles. They walked away unrecognized with $1.2 million in drugs, cash, and jewelry. The police didn't identify a suspect. Nash did. He pointed fingers at several people who he knew had been in his home that day, including John Holmes, who had returned three separate times, presumably to make sure the door was unlocked. A couple days later, police received a panicked phone call from a pair of furniture movers. They'd been working at the house next door to 8763 Wonderland, and they heard desperate, pained moans coming from the drug house. Investigators were met with a horrible scene where bodies were strewn and beaten and a bloody hammer was tangled in the sheets with metal pipes lining the floor. The only survivor was Susan, whose moans the furniture people heard. And though she'd survive and make a full recovery, she had no memory of the event. Police interviewed neighbors who did hear screams, but that wasn't weird coming from the house, which was a party and drug house. Holmes was arrested and charged with murder as they found a bloody handprint, but it was later decided that he was just caught in the crossfire. Nash was eventually arrested, but he was saved by a hung jury as one juror stood between Nash and a guilty verdict. Nash walked free until 2000 when he accepted a plea for bribing the single dissenting juror, but never admitted his part in the murders. 41 years later, the gruesome murders continue to captivate people around the world, especially here in Los Angeles. All right, LA, it's been a minute.